releasing a software in the market requires a concentrated effort to not just test and achieve effective quality, but doing so in terms of a quantified test data metrics to estimate and improve the quality. This video will shed some light on the nuances of a test metrics. This video will cover the need of software testing as well as creating test metrics, its types, the OS browser compatibility metrics, DRE and its formula, the test execution burndown chart, understanding test case defect density and test effectiveness along with the contents of creating a test execution report. Every software product needs to undergo a rigorous effort of testing, therefore eliminating all possible bugs to ensure quality that suits customer needs and expectations. One would definitely pose certain questions regarding the time taken, cost, types and number of bugs found and fixed, product release time as well as the risk involved in the same. But all these questions can be answered via metrics which again are varied. The importance of a test metrics becomes quite evident with its role in taking decisions for subsequent activities, serving as an evidence based on which predictions are made, understanding the type of improvement requirement and in taking decisions on any process or technological changes. The various types of metrics include base metrics, which serve as the raw data collected by a test analyst that provide the project status report to the team, lead and project manager as well as act as an input for formulas to drive calculated metrics. These may include the number of test cases or the number executed, etc. Calculated metrics is a step ahead that convert the base metrics data into more useful information generally by the test lead which can be tracked at various levels. These may include the percentage completed or the percentage of the test coverage, etc. Test metrics are further categorized into product metrics that are related to the test results or the quality of software under test and process metrics that serve as the way to evaluate the effectiveness of the testing process. Herein, the sample matrix illustrates the browser OS compatibility where, for example, IE version 9.x is fully compatible with Windows 7, but this version is not supported in Windows XP. Whereas with Firefox version 5.0.x plus, only a smoke test to validate basic functionalities has been performed in Windows Vista, but is fully compatible with Windows XP. The defect resolution effectiveness becomes a measure to detect the bugs prior to the release of the product. This is calculated by dividing the valid defects resolved with the valid defects logged, multiplied by 100. Hence, based on priority, the defect resolution is calculated for the low, medium and critical defects, thereon calculating the DRE for the whole product. Here, 76% then implies the total DRE, chalking out the defects to understand the total efficiency of the product. A test execution burndown chart essentially illustrates the number of test cases executed per release in an agile environment till the time it ideally comes down to zero. Herein, with the total number of test cases that is 500, on day one, only 75 cases have been executed with 4 to 5 remaining and 5 blocked, which are the unexecuted test cases due to lack of required data and hardware. These came down to 490 at day 5 of testing, wherein only 10 test cases are blocked. This chart helps in serving as an easy pictorial representation of the project members to daily evaluate the progress. The test case defect density points out to the total number of the defect count divided by the size of the release or the total test scripts executed multiplied by 100. With the instance mentioned here, one can easily evaluate the defect density or the test case efficiency implying the number of test cases which helped in uncovering the defects. Test effectiveness helps in evaluating the effect 
that the test environment has on the software product. This again is calculated by dividing the number of defects found during the testing phase with the total defects found during the testing phase as well as post release. Therefore, a test execution report presents a managerial summary about the progress and the condition of the product at the end of each testing cycle, be it an iteration or sprint, in determining the release readiness. It includes the scope of testing, the test environment details, the coverage details, the list of open defects. Defect resolution effectiveness and finally in stating whether QA is ready to release with recommendations or is not to be released yet. With this one, get a comprehensive insight on the position of a project or a software product status. We hope that you learned a little something on test metrics and its importance in the process of products development. To keep on exploring, log on to our site www.qainfotech.com. Thank you.